Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Wednesday here, 04 September. Interesting evening last night. Uh, Boris lost his bid there. The Rebels won um, in the first step to blocking a no Brexit deal. I believe the vote was 328 to 301. So it was tight. Uh, but Boris pulled it off. So now um, it looks like we're going to be heading for a general election. Uh, so this, things aren't super clear still. Uh, I don't really pretend to understand all of the nuances of this, but it certainly takes a little bit of pressure off of Sterling. Let's take a look at these charts. Uh, yesterday up to 91. 49, what was it, 48 in Euro Sterling, back down, uh, cable went down to 119.56, now we're back up 121, you see these big tails in all of these bars, Sterling Swiss um, went down to 118.40 I believe, no 118.55. We still like cross higher, uh, sterling Swiss higher, euro sterling lower. So we like uh, to own sterling against its European counterparts. Uh, we trade sterling Swiss because we live in Switzerland. I don't suggest that uh, people follow me out there. Most of you do not live in Switzerland. We're comfortable with sterling Swiss. We've been watching it for years. Euro sterling is the horse. Uh, one of the reasons we like it is, you know, we feel like, you know, the sterling side has been punished a lot. The euro side hasn't been punished a lot. Um, and we think that if there is a bad Brexit, also Europe is also screwed. So, you know, this will give you a little bit more cushion on um, some of the bad news that's coming out. Anyway, we still like this uh, short, you know, long sterling against the crosses, basically. Uh, so today you can sell um, between 75 and 95. Confirmation that yesterday was a spoof. Uh, we get, if we get a new low today, through 48. So it's 20 points lower. Um, Eventually, we do think this 9018 is going to go, and, and that's going to act as a, as more of a momentum style break trade level. But this is not not for today. Um, we'll see going forward. Um, what else is out there? Euro dollar printed a turn bar here. 80 now is incredibly important. Yesterday's high, um, 79. Today's high, 79. Uh, there will be stops above that at the European Open. We do expect this to float higher. Euro yen also. Um, we expect this to turn. ES floated higher. Now we're 29.24. We're still in the range here. And as we talked about yesterday, it's quite tricky to sell mid-range or, or buy mid-range because where do you put your stops? So we're, we're using patience here. We will be selling um, up between 49 and 69. This is our sell zone. Uh, we don't think the U.S. is out of the water yet, uh, but this is not really in play here today. S&Ps for now. Um, we'll see if we can go higher. I, I don't have a ton of faith uh, that this can crawl higher up to 49 today. So we're just watching it. Uh, but it gives you a little bit of risk on tone today, uh, which is why we like that euro yen higher. Dollars are yesterday beat on the GDP. It was really at the mercy of S and P's all day, so we printed 08 at one point as S and P's were at, were at 29.10, and then we went down to 28.95, and we went to 16, and da da da. Now we're back here knocking on the door on the downside. This does look like it's going to break. Um, nice beat yesterday in South Africa. As as loath as I am to buy this currency, the technical the the chart here uh, is basically kind of screaming. Um, let's sell some dollars and buy some czar. 
So being short dollar czar we like today. Um, real liquidity starts in about about an hour's time. Um, so selling anywhere between uh, 07 and 10 makes sense with sense to us with sort of a 14 stop. Sterling yen turn bar as well. Um, with risk on, this looks decent. It's tough to get on to sterling yen here now. We're right back in the middle of the range. We don't think this is going to accelerate anywhere fast. But there's a lot of clear air up there. The, the resistance here is, is 128.50. You could kind of use that as a pivot today. Um, but we're playing sterling in another arena, so we're not going to be playing sterling yen. But it's basically the same trade. You see this daily bar. This is a turn. Took out a lot of the longs down here. Now we have a double bottom at 128.60. I mean 126.60, excuse me. Sterling yen looks like it's turned. Uh, let's go to euro yen. One of the reasons we like these euro higher is because a lot of these ECB guys are seem to be changing their mind about um, QE and about this easing bias. We had Holtzman over the weekend. Um, we've now had Villeroy and Müller also kind of question this. We have Draghi's last meeting. Is he really going to put the hammer down and have his legacy stamped with this crazy easing policy? Uh, the market's not overly um, short euro, so that doesn't really help on the top side. Although you could argue that uh, people sold euro yesterday and faded this into uh, 109 between 109.50 and 70, almost everyone that I know was trying to sell euros yesterday. Um, they've all been filled now, so the the positioning's a little bit bigger. But irregardless of that, um, we like euro higher, uh, so euro through 80, and euro yen, which obviously has come down fair ways now you know 600 points since this sort of steady 122 area this has some gaps to fill and, and has some topside room especially if we're risk on so if you take this down to the four hourly chart where's your entry gonna be we did print a 44 high overnight um, maybe once we break that high you can kind of just be getting long in that region between 44 and 54 uh, on the top side and sort of a momentum style trade um, euro yen higher we do like that dollar cad we talked about it yesterday we sellers between 45 and 65 it, it, it did go up to 80 um, but then we had this big um, bearish engulfer we knew it wasn't really going to live uh, the oxygen was very thin up there for dollar cad BOC today so uh, keep that in mind series of lows now at 23 a really important low at 12 this looks set to go lower now so short dollar cad if you're short from 50 maybe take profit on half the position so then you have an average at around 80 uh, going into BOC if you're not short up there you're going to have to just wait now um, and trade the BOC. I believe there's no statement today uh, at the BOC. So we think no change. Um, and I think, I mean, I believe there's no press conference. I'll have to look into this a little bit more. I'll, I'll put it on Twitter. Um, but BOC later this afternoon, we have a little bit of time to do the fine details of this. But short dollar CAD looks the way. Um, the cousin Aussie dollar market looks to be getting caught short here. Uh, we saw this yesterday after the RBA. Now we bullish engulfed on the dailies. 68.20 is massively important. We've been talking about this for a while. Um, we've printed a high today already of 83. You know, through the figure is going to bleed to 20. Um, this is a risk on trade in general. We did have some um, news out overnight uh, in Aussie, and they missed on their PMI, but they um, 
GDP was in line. So Aussie looks like it's set to go higher. This bullish engulfing at the at the at the low is very very powerful. So just like dollar CAD lower, Aussie higher. It's the same trade. So be careful managing your risk. That's basically putting on. If you have both of them on, it's basically your value at risk is doubled with the same exact position on. So be careful with that uh, going forward. But we do like Aussie higher, dollar CAD lower. What else? Uh, let's look at the uh, boons here. This uh, uh, is an important bar. Printed basically uh, the all-time highs, all-time low in yields. Smashed off of it. This is basically ECB chatter driving this. Below 60 is going to be important. And when we do think this can trundle lower, we'll be watching this kind of give us guidance on Euro Yen and Euro Dollar and the timing of, uh, of entries and management of positions. But Boons look set to go lower. Yesterday's low was 81. Looks like we're opening at 86. Um, we'll see. We'll see Boons, but we are watching uh, Boons closely. U.S. 10-year bonds, not much to say. Just still too high, but no sense of turn yet. Uh, the big day will be Friday for non-farms to decide the next leg for this for this guy. One final, final, final last thing, crude. We took a little dip below this 95 lows, 88 was low, bounced pretty hard. This co corroborates with risk on, uh, dollar CAD lower. Um, so we don't have a whole, we don't have a dog in this fight. We made a little bit of money uh, yesterday being short. Um, just kind of scalped some money between 50 and the figure on the three handle. But today we are um, just watching this, using it as a, as a risk barometer. So quite a few things on our mind today. We like sterling, long against the crosses. We're going to be buying euros today, buying euro yen. Short dollar CAD, core short. Um, and we are not long Aussie, but we do recommend being long Aussie dollar. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, good luck today. Uh, the calendar is um, is PMIs. What do we have? Uh, here's the calendar. PMIs in Italy, Germany. So we've got uh, some PMIs out today. Services PMI in the, out in the UK. That'll be watched closely. U retail sales out of Europe. Trade balance out of dollar CAD, trade balance in the U.S., and then BOC. BOC is the big, the big one today, but we do need to watch these PMIs uh, this morning in Europe. And gosh, if they're if they're good, which seems hard to believe, uh, this will lend some credence to long euro as well. Okay, I've said enough today. Uh, good luck out, good luck out there, people. Make some dough. I will see you all tomorrow. Ciao.